Okay, so we're just at the start of the small intestine and we can just about see this is the first glimpse of, of one of the tapeworms. This worm is probably between one and two meters in length. You can see how, how closely the, the worm is associated with the intestine. We have the wall of the intestine closing in around the worm, so very tightly ad adhered to it. The segments themselves increase in size as we move down the length of the worm. So this is still quite near the front end because these, these segments are quite, quite shallow. Okay, I think we can see some much bigger segments here. This is further down the length of that worm, getting towards the, the, the back end of it. The segments get bigger, they get more mature. And here we've got the biggest segments here. So these segments are probably about a centimeter or so in size. And again, dipping back down into the back parts of the intestine. Okay, so here we have uh, a fairly sexually mature segment here. It's ready to start producing eggs and uh, the, the animals themselves self-fertilize. So there are male and female parts within this segment and self-fertilization takes place. The whole of the segment will then become completely full of eggs and will eventually detach from the worm and pass out in the fecal material. And, and that's how the animal reproduces. Okay, so here's the very end of that worm. This is the last segment which has been produced. Uh, they would have started off as very small segments near the neck of, of the, the parasite. And as the, the parasite gets older, they become further, further back and become more mature, bigger. These are the, the, the oldest ones which are, are, are occurring in the intestine. Okay, as we move further down the intestine, we come across the second of the two tapeworms. And it's quite interesting to, to note that the position of these worms, they're not exactly together. They're spaced out along the intestine, so they're sort of avoiding each other to some extent and, and finding a different part of the intestine to inhabit. The length of the small intestine is about seven meters in, in an adult's human. These worms can maybe get up to about 10 meters in length. So the worm itself quite often when it's fully mature is very folded and, and coiled up so that it's taking up a bit less space in the intestine. Inside each segment are quite significant muscle systems and they can actually move to different parts of the intestine, be detaching and then reattaching to the wall. We're now moving to the, the third worm. Here we can see the actual very front end of the worm. This is called the scolex and we can actually see there are four suckers. So these suckers grasp on to the, the wall of the intestine and they hold the worm in place. Other tapeworms might have some hooks around the top as well, which they sort of anchor into the intestinal wall. These worms don't have any intestine. They simply absorb the nutrients across the body wall. So they don't actually eat anything. They absorb as well as the, in the intestine absorbs food. So does the worm itself. In most cases, the worms themselves don't cause a huge problem to the host. Generally speaking, the intestine is full of nutritional material which is sufficient for the host and also sufficient for the parasite even if there are three of those parasites there.